So my name's Richard Board. Um, you are in my tiny house on wheels that I designed and built from the ground up. I was able to quit my job a couple months ago and start my own business. Um, you know, I've, I've got so much more time for what I want to do in life, um, and I don't have to wake up every morning saying, oh, I have to do this or I have to do that. It's, you know, the work I do now, it's I want to work for these people, and so it's fun for me, or I, I want to go bike for the day. Like, <laughs> it's nice out. I don't want to do, I don't want to sit a, in a, a chair all day, and I'll work at night or whatever, so it's kind of my, my journey. <laughs> A lot of my house is reclaimed, salvaged, literally pulled out of dumpsters. The entire time when I was building, I kept what I considered my salvage kit in the back of the car. Um, you know, a pair of gloves, some basic hand tools, some tarps, and tie-downs and stuff like that. Uh, one of my favorite things that I pulled out of the dump was this door. It, we were on a bike ride and rode past this old, old historic house that was getting renovated, and I saw it out by the dumpster, so I went and asked, Hey, are you throwing that away or is it something you're going to use? So, no, we've had a couple neighbors interested in it, but no one's picked it up. I'll take it off your hands right now. Um, got it home and it had a mirror on it. Took the mirror off and it was dated December 2nd, 1926. So this door turns 90 years old this year. Um, stripped it, sanded it, stained it, sealed it, all of that stuff. And it's, it's one of my favorite parts of my house. Uh, my entire ceiling is uh, reclaimed deck wood that I found on the side of the road. Um, ran it through a table saw six times and pulled at least a thousand nails out of it by hand. Um, it was a lot of work. It had intended to be my siding and then I realized, oh, I do not have nearly enough to do that, so I'm using it inside. <laughs> uh, so one of the cool things about my tiny house is... 110-inch projector screen. I've got surround sound, Bluetooth, everything. You know, just because you're living tiny doesn't necessarily mean you're without your toys. Um, so this was one thing that I wanted to incorporate in mine. It works awesome for my house just as a projector screen, but also when I have guests over as a little privacy screen. Um, and then this summer when it's getting hot, my AC is behind there, so I've got a big AC unit cooling a little bitty space. Um, so it stays nice and cool. I've got three bikes that hang from the ceiling. You know, one of my must-haves in my house was I had to have my bikes inside. Trying to find a way to hold three bikes in 250 square feet was a challenging, but I found a way. <laughs> So these just come down from the ceiling. Um, and they're ready to go. This is my office space. I have a nice little fold-up table here. And then a computer monitor that comes out. It works great as a uh, standing desk or when I don't want to stand. Got my little bar height stool. It's kind of my office space. Conveniently placed next to the beer taps. <laughs> the great things about t tiny houses are that they're so customizable to the individual. For me, brewing is one of my big hobbies and something that's really important to me and something that I compete in, so having beer in the house was a must. And so I think I'm the only tiny house with two beer taps, two kegs, and I've got a full fermentation chamber um, underneath my kit bathroom sink. Um, so in theory, I can have 30 gallons of beer going here at any given point in time, um, which is pretty cool. Some of the other cool things I have in my house, my sink is actually a commercial dishwashing station. 
that I picked up at auction for like 130 bucks and ended up customizing it so I have the butcher block countertops and then can lift up to have storage for dishes and things like that. So just, you know, finding those little gems on the side of the road kind of thing and making them work for what you need. I've got a uh, ladder system that goes up to my right now storage loft, um, but those are actually toilet paper roll holders that I picked up for two bucks a piece. Pocket door, big bathroom, you know, a bigger shower than I've had in most of my apartments. My bathroom floor, I've got uh, actually found firewood on the side of the road and uh, cut it to three quarters of an inch, uh, glued it down, and I still need to pour an epoxy over it. But um, just one of those little features that you know you can do whatever you want and you don't have to worry about your resale value or what people are going to think because I thought it was cool and so I did it. <laughs> Uh, so this is one of my paintings. Um, I, I do a little bit of everything. I actually had five paintings this big um, that I'd done. I had to get rid of four of them because they just wouldn't fit in the house, but this was my favorite one, so it had, a, had to find a place in the house. The way I built my house is what's called SIPs, uh, Structural Insulated Panels. Um, basically what it is is a piece of foam sandwiched between two pieces of OSB. Um, what's great about this is that um, basically I designed my house custom, sent it to a SIPS manufacturer, and they sent me my walls all prefabricated, windows, doors cut, everything on a flatbed trailer. And what was great about it was we were able to get the house shell up in two days and with 10 people who had never built houses a house before was able to get the place dried in within two weeks and then living here in four and a half months the nice things about sips one they go up really quick but two they're very 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 strong you have a lot less um, issues with you know draftiness and thermal bridging and stuff like that because it's one solid piece instead of you know a traditional two by four built house so my story going into the tiny house world started with probably the worst year of my entire life. When I graduated college, I really wanted a motorcycle. And so that was my graduation present to myself. I had the bike for three days, was riding home from work, and a lady ran me over because she was texting and driving. Shattered my femur, shattered my leg. Um, ended up having to get a rod put in my femur and a plate in my ankle. About a year recovery from accident to, you know, back to normal. <clears throat> During that time, I spent a lot of time in a, in a hospital bed, you know, just with nothing to do and realized, you know, life is short. And, you know, I, I was just riding home from work. I had plans for the weekend was just living my life and then that day my life completely changed. You know, after that I kind of realized I didn't want to do the corporate job and the 40 hours a week and waking up every morning going, I don't want to go to work, today's going to be awful. And so I was trying to figure out, you know, what I could do to not do that and live more like I wanted to live. and happened to come across um, a tiny house on Facebook and, you know, clicked on it just kind of out of interest and didn't think much of it. And then it just kind of got ingrained in my brain and I would see more things and then start doing more research. And from there went to, you know, from, you know, I can never do this to, well, what if I designed one? And like, what if, what if I was going to do it, then what would I do? And from there kind of went to, you know, okay, I'm actually going to do this. And then from there, the trailer showed up and the wall showed up. And um, four and a half months later, I was living in my tiny house. The spot I'm parked at at the moment, it's uh, an ex coworker of mine. She, we used to work together a couple years ago. Her and her husband bought the property uh, about 15 years ago, planning to renovate it, clean it up, knew it needed a lot of work. Um, her husband sadly passed away two years later. So she's just been kind of trying to maintain the property and keep it from falling into complete disrepair by herself and has had trouble with it. 
but you know it's a very nice symbiotic relationship having me out here because you know it's it, it's just taking up part, uh, part of her driveway but she gets somebody out here that you know I'm here to help put her fence back up or air up the tires in her car or she'll come up and honk the horn and come and help her get groceries and for me it's five minutes of my day it takes no time at all but for her that's a real struggle to get her groceries in. The tiny house movement it's not about the houses it's about the lifestyle and it's about the just life that you can live because of it. For me tiny house is freedom you know I don't have to work when I don't want to work I can do other things like you know I love my house it's beautiful but at the end of the day it's still a thing what I love about it more is the opportunities that it allows me so I think that's the big thing about the tiny house movement is it's not really about the houses it's it's about the life that comes with the house Christian. Thank you very much for watching our video. Yes, and subscribing to our channel. And don't forget to check out more tiny house stories and tours. Oh, and don't forget to join us on Patreon. And again, don't forget to subscribe. <laughs> See you next time. Take it easy, guys.